Hey guys, so a lot of you write me and ask me about carburetor jets and um, how you should change them out, how you should adjust them and whatnot if you add pod filters or uh, if you had a cutoff exhaust or a free flowing exhaust or whatever. And um, I've been kind of uh, responding back to you guys with a really sort of simple rule of thumb about it, but um, I'm starting to feel like you guys deserve more detailed explanation and uh, better resources about how to really fine tune your carbs. So that's what this video is going to be about. Alright, now the simple rule of thumb is this. You got to remember that if you install filters like these, pod filters, well this is a double pod, but if you install single pods or double pods or whatever, um, or if you have a cutoff exhaust like something like this, or a free flowing exhaust, you are going to get more air movement through your engine and through your carburetors. Your bike needs the same ratio of um, gas to air in order for it to run reliably. If you're just starting up on a really cold wet day it might be as low as one to three one part um, one part gas to three parts air or if you're just cruising you know and you're under a light load it might be as high as one to fourteen or one to sixteen or something like that but it needs to have this ratio maintained. If you install something like this it increases the airflow and this increases the rate at which your exhaust can leave and so you need to increase the gas a little bit um, in order to keep that ratio the same and so that you can run reliably. You'll typically get um, a boost in horsepower because you know if you push more air and you push more gas into your bike you will run faster. I mean that's that's what your uh, that's what the end goal is. That's why people uh, do stuff like this. It's not just for looks. But um, if you're going to tinker around with your bike, like uh, this poor GSXR, um, you're going to uh, you're going to need to maintain that ratio. And so, uh, this is the really simple rule of thumb. Okay, so if you add pod filters or uh, a cutoff exhaust, you're going to want to increase your main jets by 2.5. If you have pod filters and a cutoff exhaust, like that bike out there does. You want to increase your main jets by 5, increase the pilots by 2.5, uh, shim your needle up one step, and uh, tinker with your pilot screw. And I'm going to explain about what all this means and everything. But that's just a rule of thumb, and that should really get you into the, um, into the right ballpark. Um, that's definitely not fine-tuning these carbs, but um, that should get you pretty close to where you need to be. Now remember, before you go into um, fine-tuning your carbs and setting them and whatnot, you got to make sure that um, your bike is ready to be set. You need to make sure that your valves are adjusted properly. You have no uh, air leaks, no vacuum leaks. You got to make sure that um, you've got good gas in it. That uh, preferably it's not like a moist, wet day like it is today. Um, you got to make sure you have a really good battery in it. Um, uh, your spark plugs aren't fouled. Uh, you've got good lines and everything. Basically, everything else is set because you don't want to introduce any uh, other variables into the adjustment process. All right, so first we're going to talk about theory, and this is my really goofy representation of one carb. Um, from here, you get your air in, and this leads to the motor. To the motor. And so to... Um, to orient you guys, in here is the float bowl, and you have your level of gasoline down in here. Uh, here's your slide, and here's your needle. Now, um, there are a couple of uh, really important adjustment points on these carbs, and um, I'm going to basically tell you where their rough anatomical positions are. Uh, first off, you have your main jet which is right here, and your needle comes down, and it sits right in here. Okay, and so when air comes in, it's going to come in here, it's going to sort of like get underneath here and push your slide up, and this is going to recess all the way up into this cap here, and um, what that does is it raises this needle here, and it allows the vacuum of the air rushing by, it allows that to vacuum up gasoline to come up through here and then it mixes. 
You see these? These are air molecules that are now filled with gas. And they go out to the motor. So, this is one adjustment point right here. This is where your main jet is. And this is obviously a tiny little orifice that, um, uh, that, that allows a certain amount of gas to come in. And you can swap these in and out. I'm going to show you guys. No, I actually have a couple. Well, there's a pilot. Yeah, there's some main jets. Sometimes you buy them and they come in these little drug dime bags. But um, these are jets that I just bought for that GSXR outside. And I get pretty much all of my jets from JetsRS. JetsRS.com. Super cheap. Okay. So these are these little things, and uh, you can switch them in and out. That's one adjustment point. Another adjustment point is uh, this um, this needle itself. And I'm going to show you guys how to adjust it, but um, that's what I was talking about in the previous frame. Um, uh, how to adjust the, uh, how to shim up the needle. If you raise this needle up into the slide up here, um, what that will do is it will make it shorter on this end, and so it will actually start to draw up gas, more gas, faster. And that will enrich in your mixture. If you open this up, it's going to enrich in it. If you um, install smaller jets, it's going to lean it out, obviously. And so if you raise this up, it's also going to enrich in it. Um, let me think. You have in here something a little bit similar which is your pilot on the end of it is one of these a pilot jet and that's got a tiny little hole connected to your pilot jet in a, a lot of bikes you've got your pilot screw and that's just sort of a uh, just sort of little pipe that goes in through here and uh, it's got a screw on it with the screw head. And by adjusting this screw, you can, um, this, uh, the screw will actually, on some bikes, it will adjust uh, how much air comes back in through here. And uh, some bikes, it will uh, actually increase the gas mixture. It depends on what side of the, the carb it's on. But um, what it will do is it will uh, lean out or enrich in your mixture as well. So that's an adjustment point. You can, um, adjust these uh, these two jets here you can shim up your needle and uh, actually sometimes also you can adjust your valve here if you've got a cutaway right here um, you will uh, lean out the mixture if like for example you install slides with a bigger cutaway or a smaller cutaway you can uh, adjust it there I don't typically do that um, because uh, a lot of newer bikes they don't very often have um, these slides that can be adjusted like that. Like for example, we have these uh, GSXR carbs, and um, you know, in theory, you can uh, you can buy slides for uh, for many bikes that have uh, like a different size opening right here. But um, that's not an adjustment point that I utilize very often. So. That's your carburetor in action. All right, so first I'm gonna show you guys how to adjust the needle. Um, first off, guys, it's a really good idea to uh, take notes or take pictures or whatever um, of what your carbs were stock. So if you ever get too far down the rabbit hole or whatever, and um, you just can't get your bike running right, you know, and it, it just won't perform for you, you know, anything, you can always put it back to stock. and um, that's the uh, adjustment that a whole team of Japanese engineers recommends for your bike. So, um, you know, if all else fails, listen to them. But if you really do want to tinker with it and everything, don't be afraid to do it. Uh, it's uh, really easy to tinker with it. Not so easy to get it right. But, I mean, it's fun. You're not going to hurt anything. Um, so, just, you know, don't be afraid is what I say. Alright, so... We're going to look at these needles here. Basically, just pop one of these open. Take out your little spring here. Real gently pull up your diaphragm. And you're going to see you've got this needle hanging down here. And really, you're going to want to clean it up. My needle is pretty fucking nasty. But um, to clean it up, you can just uh, wipe it off with some um, 
some kerosene or whatever, or once you take the needle out and you bring it away from the uh, from the diaphragm, you can hit it with some carb spray, and then buff it with um, a piece of aluminum foil. That's like the very finest uh, sandpaper that that you can find. It's just a piece of aluminum foil, and just buff it up. So you can um, go ahead and take out your needle. You're gonna have this little piece right in here that you don't want to lose. And you can see right here, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but there's this little stay right here, and it clips into a number of different grooves that go down here. And so you can move this up and down. If you move it up, think about it now, if you move it up, you're in effect uh, elongating this needle. And so the gas is gonna have a little bit of harder time being sucked up into um, into your venturi there, into where your gas and your, uh, your air mix. And so uh, you're gonna lean it out. If you move it down, you're shortening the needle and so you're, uh, you're gonna enrich in it. Um, so basically what this happen, what this does is it just pops off and pops back on. Sometimes you have carbs that uh, aren't adjustable like this and in that case you need to find yourself a little washer or something or a little shim and um, you just slide it up underneath here, kind of like how this thing was. This is in effect a little shim. But um, you just, you know, slide them all up in there. If you need to enrich it more, slide another one. Just tinker around with it. All right, now this is the second adjustment point. Uh, on the other side of these carbs, you've got your little uh, um, pilot screw. And uh, you just get in there with a the screwdriver and uh, you screw it in or out to uh, make it richer or leaner. Um, not a whole lot to it. Uh, you obviously don't want to uh, screw it in too far. What I do is I just basically screw it in until it lightly seats and then I back it out a certain number of screws that I've determined uh, I want it. What I, when I first get a set of carbs and I clean them or whatever um, and I set these pilot screws, I start out at about two and a half full rotations. That's a pretty good place to start out for um, most uh, most motorcycles of this vintage, you know, if it's a two-cylinder or a four-cylinder, I start out about two rotations out and then go from there. If I find that I have a lot of popping on deceleration, um, a lot of backfiring, then um, then I'm going to want to screw it out a little bit more. Um, and uh, these are pretty easy to just tinker around with. So, pilot screws. All right. And so uh, this is the inside of the carbs. If you guys have seen my other videos, you, I'm sure you've, I've showed you these before for a number of good reasons. Um, it's actually still a little bit full of gasoline, so I'm going to be sure not to tip it over onto the poor doggy. But um, here are the other two uh, adjustment points that I will typically go at. The first is you've got your main jet right here. And um, basically all you do is you just you know unscrew it off and read the little number on it. If it says something like 132 and you just uh, you just put pods and uh, exhaust on, then increase that to 137. You increase that by five points up or two steps. A lot of guys will be like, oh, increase it by two steps. And a step is 2.5 points or whatever. Um, so just increase it by five and uh, you should be good. Hidden underneath here is the pilot jet. And um, I'm not going to molest this piece of plastic too much, but it's right down there in that little hole there. And you just get your little screwdriver in there, go ahead and pull it out and read the number on that. Not a whole lot to it. Now if that's all there was to it, I probably wouldn't even have to make this video. I could just tell you guys, hey, that's how it's done, and bada boom. But um, the really tricky part about carburetor adjustment is knowing how, is not knowing how to adjust uh, the carburetors, it's knowing when and what to adjust. Um, it's really simple to throw new jets in there and and, um, and whatnot and button it all back up and toss it back on the bike, but knowing how to adjust your jets, knowing how to adjust your needle, knowing when you need to do one or the other, um, that's the tricky part. Uh, if you make one adjustment, you can make your bike run worse. So um, that's the part that, uh, that really uh, throws a lot of guys through a loop, and it's actually a pretty delicate process. And so in order to explain that, just, you know, bear with me here. I'm going to do my best to explain it. Not even I get it right all the time, or even most of the time. Um, so, uh, you know, don't take this tutorial as gospel for every single bike out there.
but um, hopefully it's some food for thought for you guys who want to try this on your own. Um, I definitely encourage you to do some more research into it uh, because there are different guys who have different opinions and different uh, techniques on how to do this. So, um, you know, go ahead and, uh, and Google it. Um, try and find some good resources. This is a uh, diagram which is all over the internet. And uh, it really helped me out when I was trying to understand this for the first time. Um, because what you got to understand is that carburetor adjustment uh, really doesn't have anything to do with engine speed or how fast the bike is going. It's all about throttle position. So, for instance, you have right down here at the bottom part of your gra of the graph, closed throttle, one eighth, quarter, half, three quarters, and full throttle. So when you're at closed throttle and you're just idling, the um, adjustment part of your carburetors, which are having the greatest effect, pretty much the only effect on the way your bike is running, is uh, your pilot air screw and the jet. Remember that little jet that I was talking about plus the adjustment screw. All right. Once you start giving it a little bit of throttle, you are uh, controlled a little bit by throttle valve cutaway, and that's that. Um, that's that. It's this part right here. That's what I was talking about right here. That's the adjustment part that I don't really go into. Um, maybe if I had, you know, like a like a one cylinder two stroke thumper or something like that, I would uh, I would mess with that. But for uh, these uh, four cylinder four stroke bikes, I just I don't really go into it because as you can see here, you uh, once you get into like what is this like this one starts maybe at one sixteenth open throttle. Once you get through here, you're still uh, very much being um, influenced by your um, pilot jet and your pilot screw. So you can still do a pretty good job um, adjusting your carbs just with the pilot screw through the one quarter. You, um, additionally, once you get between one eighth and one quarter, your jet needle and uh, um, and your needle jet. Your needle jet is the uh, the tube that the um, that the needle goes up and down through. And sometimes they can be adjusted as well. You can buy a different ones. But um, that's when uh, its influence comes in. So this is when you would want to shim your uh, um, your needle. If, for example, um, you are experiencing problems at like one quarter throttle. We'll just go to this chart. You can see one quarter throttle. You have a um, pretty decent amount of influence with your uh, pilot screw and pilot jet. And you also have some beginning influence with your jet needle. So if you've got problems right here, you know, okay, maybe I'll screw this pilot screw out a little bit and maybe I'll shim my needle up just one just one click. And so you can see this has a pretty wide range, but you don't really get until into the influence of the main jet until you um, get to maybe about half halfway open throttle. And uh, its main influence comes at like wide open throttle above three quarters, like we're way in here. So, what does all this mean? Well, if you uh, are trying to adjust your bike, you know, and it's bogging down a little bit and you're having a hard time with it, um, you need to determine where in your throttle range you're having that hard time. If, let's say, everything is honky dory until you get above three quarters and then it starts to bog as you're really gunning it, well, then you know that um, you need to tinker with the main jet. If um, it idles fine and at wide open is fine, but once you get in through here, it will like it'll be like stutter, 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 stutter like that. Then you know that your adjustment in here in your needle needs to be uh, needs to be tinkered with. So um, that's what all that means. All right, so how do you determine where on your uh, throttle range you have your problem? Well, if you've got some bogging down uh, as you're uh, running your bike and uh, you want to determine what uh, adjustment point you need to adjust, this is a really handy thing to do. What I will do is I'll take a little piece of tape here and um, tape it around this housing here. And then uh, you've got another little skinny piece of tape right here. And then you have these gradient points. All right. Obviously, right here the throttle is closed, and so that's like at, you know, just at idle speed. This represents quarter open. This is half open. This is three quarters, and then this is wide open throttle. So, 
what I will do is I'll just sit here with the bike running and I'll be like, okay, we're going good right here, nice and steady. Okay, still nice and steady. Up, oh, it's starting to bog right here and it bogs through here, but it recovers through here. Okay, so I know I'm like between one quarter and maybe three quarters or right here or somewhere in this range. And then I'll go back to that um to that chart and I'll be like, okay, well right in this range I see that my uh needle adjustment will take care of this range. So that's where I get it started at. Um, if, uh, if I really want to fine tune it, what I will actually do is once I get it running real good here, what I will do is I will sit and hold the throttle. Um, just as one side note, if you're doing this on an air-cooled bike like this Kawasaki here, go ahead and put like a box fan or a shop fan or something here and uh, have it blowing some air on your bike so that you have some airflow so you can start to cool down your engine because uh, you don't want to be just revving and revving and revving this bike without it circulating some air because it's going to overheat. But sometimes you need to do this. So I will actually hold this and I'll hold it for maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds and then without releasing the throttle I will cut the, uh, the engine. I'll just cut it off or I'll just hit the kill switch. Then I'm going to pull a spark plug and read it. I'm going to see if it's um, if it's lean or if it's rich or if it's in the good range. Now I'm going to put a couple pictures up on what you want to look for in spark plugs. This is what a lean spark plug looks like. Alright, and uh, this is what a rich spark plug looks like. And this is the spark plug that you're going for. Okay, so it's pretty important to uh, to determine that you're not running a little bit too lean. Um, sometimes if uh, if you're doing good in like the lower range here in like the idle range, but you start to lean out here or up here, your bike still may run more or less decently. However, that can be dangerous for your bike because a lean mixture will burn a lot hotter and um, you'll start to cook some of your parts, you know, valves and whatnot. So um, even though it, the bike runs good, you want to determine that you're not running lean throughout this range. So that's why this test is really good. You know, just open it up here and allow, uh, allow your motor to, um, to indicate on the, uh, on the spark plugs whether or not you're running uh, lean or rich. So if you're, um, you know, for example, if you find that you're running a little bit lean when you're all the way up here, you know, increase your uh, main jets another 2.5 or so. Um, if you're running a little bit lean right in here, pull your uh, your needle up a little bit. If you're running lean right here, well, then you'll typically have a hard time starting the bike. Um, but you can uh, increase your uh, your pilot jet size, or you can um, adjust your uh, your screw. All right, now a couple other things that I'm just going to throw in here at the end after looking over my notes. Um, before you want to do this, uh, you obviously need to adjust your float heights. If you have um, uh, your uh, your gas level in here is too low, you're going to lean things out a little bit because it's going to take more vacuum to draw it all up. Here's my, here's my diagram here. If, uh, if this level is low, it's going to take more suction in here, and so you're not going to get as many of these particles in here. Um, alternatively, if it's too high, you're gonna um, a you're gonna overflow, but also you're going to be a little bit rich. So um, that's not really an adjustment point that um, that I use. I've heard of guys uh, who want to enrich in their bike throughout the entire range. What they will do um, is actually raise their floats up a little bit. I don't do that, but um, you guys can do it if you want to. Uh, also, um, if you guys can find cutaway slides and you. Uh, uh, and you really want to, um, to you know, to work in this range here, go for it. You know, just because it's not something that I do doesn't mean that um, that it isn't something that you guys should do. Um, it's really important to have these transitions between one and the other. It's true that they overlap, but these transitions are also important. So if you can, um, if you find that um, by adjusting the cutaway, this transition in here is a lot smoother then go for it. You definitely don't want stumbling, you know, when you have to put somebody in their place out on the road. 
Um, finally, there are other uh, factors which can um, affect carburation. Um, for example, humidity and altitude. We live down here in Florida uh, at sea level, but when I... Where's my bike? There's my bike. When uh, we the Rockies, over the Rockies, like, I'm maintaining 65 miles an hour. That was two up with about 400 pounds of luggage, but that should be no problem for be no problem for my bike down here at this altitude. And that's because the air is obviously thinner up there, so things run a little bit richer. Um, I was getting almost 20 miles less to a tank, and I was just chugging along. Once we got over the Rockies, everything was fine again. But if you, you know, travel a couple states away to buy a bike, and then you bring it home, and you live at, you know, 7,000 feet above sea level or whatever, and um, you find that the bike doesn't run as well as it did when, uh, when you bought it, you know, in, in Kansas, well, um, you may need to, uh, to adjust your bike, your carbs throughout that range to accommodate for this. And that might mean putting in new jets and, uh, basically just, um, just, uh, you know, adjusting it to go through the entire range, just like I described. Um, so, uh, so that's another factor that will, uh, that will affect how your bike runs. Alright guys, so I'm sure I left some stuff out, and uh, you'll be seeing some annotations to this uh, video once, um, you know, once all you guys point out to me all the things that I left out. But uh, hopefully that should get us going into a good discussion of this. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Um, if you guys have any techniques on, uh, on ways that you'd like to do this better, uh, then go ahead and... Uh, and you know, write it up or make your own, you know, video and send me the link, and I'll definitely link it to uh, to this video. And um, hopefully, this will end up a good resource for people looking to uh, to adjust their carbs in the future. All right, good luck.